Morning people, welcome back to F Politics. Nigel Farage has come out and said he doesn't support the riots, but as you listen to what he says, it sounds more like he's reading out a list of demands and threats, like one of those movies where the hostage that's speaking to the police isn't really a hostage and is just working for the criminals. He starts off by saying that he's never had anything to do with the people who stir up the kind of hate that we've been seeing on the streets. And as for the Tommy Robinsons and those that genuinely do stir up hatred, well, I've never had anything to do with them. Does he really think we believe him? He said this about British Muslims two months ago. 46% of British Muslims support Hamas, support a terrorist organization. Now, the survey he was quoting asked British Muslims, do you have more empathy for Israel or Hamas? And given that Netanyahu's lot have committed atrocities numbering in the 40,000 lives category, it's kind of fair that 46% of British Muslims sided specifically against him. Like if you were asked to choose between OJ Simpson and Jeffrey Dahmer, and you said OJ Simpson, do you know how unhinged it would be to say, oh, you support OJ Simpson. So Nigel Farage was deliberately dishonest with survey data to make it look like British Muslims support terrorism. And then when the Southport attack happened and the police said that it wasn't terrorism, he heavily implied to his followers that it was terrorism. The police say it's a non-terror incident. I just wonder whether the truth is being withheld from us. So Nigel Farage's rhetoric has been, Muslims are terrorists, terrorists are responsible for Southport, and now we have people attacking mosques in the belief that they're defending our country. And now he's saying that he's never had anything to do with the kind of people who've been spreading the kind of hate that we've been seeing on our streets. We've even got national broadcasters, like James O'Brien, calling them the Farage riots. This is unfair, untrue, uh, and actually, it's directly inciting violence against me. Indeed, over the weekend, I've had to have a massive uplift in personal security. People have been throwing petrol bombs at mosques. An Asian man was dragged from his car in Hull. A black man was attacked by 20 people in a park. They tried to burn down a hotel that had asylum seekers still inside, then blocked the doors, fueled by the kind of hatred that Nigel Farage has been spreading. And now he's out here telling us that it's his safety we should all be concerned about. And I'll be honest with you, I have no qualms at all about saying that I hate the man, both personally and morally. Morally because he made this country poorer via Brexit. He's divided our country with the kind of hatred that we've been seeing on the streets. Personally because I've sacrificed pretty much every element of my life to the point of nearly wanting to take it while fighting back against the damage he's been doing. But I don't want anything to happen to Nigel Farage, primarily because I want him to stand trial for the damage he's done one day. And that only happens if our politics changes significantly. Making Nigel Farage a martyr will not achieve that because he is still trying to point the finger at Muslims. There were masked Muslim extremist mobs. Let's do a thought experiment. Imagine that you and most of your friends were, let's say, Ginger, and then an MP, a member of parliament, went on TV and said that 46% of Gingers support terrorism. You then had people flooding the streets, all trying to attack any building they thought might have gingers in them. Let's say you even had times and locations announced as to when these people were going to be hunting gingers. Can you imagine if a bunch of gingers then showed up at those locations, I know this is sounding crazy as I say it, but they showed up at those locations to try and defend against the people who are hunting them. And then the same MP who stirred up that hatred against you then said, There is fault, serious fault on both sides. The false equivalence between the two is insanity. And he continues that narrative that his side isn't being treated fairly when it comes to the police. And when it comes to the issue of two-tier policing, something which Keir Starmer denies, I promise you this perception began back at the time of Black Lives Matter. Remember Churchill's statue being defaced, the cenotaph being abused in central London. Oh, they attacked statues. Tell me, did Black Lives Matter also try and burn down the refuges of white people? Did they start attacking innocent people in the street? Or did a black man literally save the life of one of the English nationalists who was trying to attack them? Again, the false equivalence here is insane. And the police response? They knelt down in the street and took the knee to a Marxist organization that wants to bring down Western civilization. So four years later, he's still pushing the narrative that Black Lives Matter was about some organization based in London, not equality for black people. Do you see why people don't trust you? Most of us think that ethnic minority groups are policed entirely differently to that of white British people. Wait, did, did I just agree with this guy? Folks, that is what the country feels. That is what the country thinks. And there is evidence 
to back it up. Is this evidence in the room with us? Because I've got some of my own if you want it. Like government data showing that black people are stopped and searched by police seven times more than white people, even though white people are more likely to have drugs on them when they're stopped and searched. Will turn us into France, where these flare-ups, these racial tensions between the Muslim community and the French right flare up month after month, year after year, leaving big parts of Marseille and Paris effectively no-go zones. This guy is incredible. He stirs up hatred against Muslims who, by the way, in the start of this story, hadn't done a thing. The guy in Southport, there's no evidence that he's Muslim. His parents are from a majority Christian country. But Nigel Farage is the one who's created this violence on our streets, sending the far right against Muslims. And now he's pointing at France like, oh no, we can't end up like them where the right and Muslims are in opposition when he's the reason we're heading that way. But here's how he says we can stop having riots on our streets. And I believe we can solve the problem. We need to end mass immigration now to send a message to people we understand so he's just reading out the demands of the people who are on the streets he helped send them out there and now he's being their spokesperson and yet he's still saying the kind of stuff that makes those people feel they have to go out there and defend their country people not even recognizing the centers of some of our towns and cities as even being vaguely english anymore if we allow all of those things that we've built defended over centuries we allow all of those things to come under threat, then we are in very, very big trouble. Nigel Farage is one of the big bosses behind the hatred we're seeing today. So don't let those thugs on the streets be the face of UK racism, because this is. I'm Femi. Make sure you follow F Politics so politics doesn't F you. Have a great week.